Toda you are Hallelujah. 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 Y'all may be staying, remain standing as we act that we did what y'all come for. All right, you all just sit down. Hallelujah. 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 What a great blessing it is to, to understand the riches of Yah, the revelation of his humble Shia, Yahshua the Lamb, as he grants Yisra another day that we may enter into the bait of Almighty Yah. And as the song resonated on the Shabbat that we shall hold unto the unchanging Yad, the hand of Yad. Yahshua is the same. He never changed. The Torah, it never changed. Because we as a nation of people, we have not received the love of truth. Then Yah has given us over unto concepts an ideology that is far from the pathway of truth. We are somewhat a dysfunctional people. We are twisted in our concepts, our ability to comprehend. Because we have fed our minds every kind of vile, unclean thing it is. And when there is something that is spoken that is pure, we don't understand, we have no concept of that. It is almost like a child being raised on things that are not healthy for the child's body, that the parents allow the child to consume and to eat what the child desire. And as the child grows, you see the dysfunctional nature in the child they do not know how to associate to integrate to become a part they are all standish they are segregated because their minds have not been developed so it is among the people of Yah, even in a more uh, appalling way that is sad at the degree of the simplicity of Yah's people, because they have no understanding. I'm here today to preach, to teach, to declare his immense. I am unapologetic. I don't give a damn about your fickle emotions. I don't give a damn about your juvenile conscience or mindsets because you don't give a damn about Omari Yam. It was very appeasing last night to hear the daughter and she says to me, you're beautiful. Well, I don't like compliments like that. But it was something about the way she said it that gave some strength to my bosom. If you listen today, my precious Beth, to Zion, may the riches of Yah rest upon your home. And everything that you lay your hands to, may it prosper in Yahshua, Hamashiach. I did not start off with the prayer toward Yerushalayim, because I want to read some things this morning. It is somewhat difficult for us as a nation of people. Yah gives us simple instructions. If he commands us to turn to Shub, toward, then we do it that way. For you to turn is not, I want you all to look at me, not to stand when I pray or when the Zachin prays, turning toward Yerushalayim, for you to turn like this or like that. It is for you to shub, to turn towards. Toward is derech, the path, the distance, the way. That is what it means. Now I can understand that once. But when I see the repetitiveness of that error, there's something in you that is malfunctioning. You're not functioning in the Ra'ach of Omariyah. 
I was thinking the other day as I toiled and labored in the Torah, as your commands us to lahag, and I am of that unlearned it ability that I am constantly revisiting things to understand the depths of a verb that Yah would use in that nature. Even as Shaul will command us to study, to show ourselves approved of unto Yah as a workman that doesn't even consider the shamefulness of his or her activities, that we may discern righteously how to lay the precept upon precept, the line upon line, here a little and there a little. And so as I began to revisit, I'm constantly doing that. I wanted to revisit the word lahag. It is a verb of all Maria, everything that Yah expresses. It is a tatamont power. It is great. There is no other word. Every word that he speaks, it is life. It is powerful. And there is no duplicity in his language. And as you become a student to try to learn some of the Hebraic expression, you will find that in the alphabet system that all the alphabets sound differently. In this phonetics of our system, they sound almost a lot, and it confuses the mind. I don't want to get ahead of myself because I'm going to teach today. And as I began to look at this word, lehag, it is a devotion. There is only one thing that Yisraya is devoted to. Uh, it's rebelliousness and the sin of their wickedness. And when one begins to lehag, there is a devotion. And it is an exercise of mental and spiritual pressing to press beyond the barringers that impedes our progress. Our growth in the knowledge of Torah. We are a fragile, weak people. We don't know a damn thing because uh, there is no devotion unto you. So when one truly lehag, one devotes oneself to the principles to understand and to receive revelation. We've been taught to inquire or to read the Torah of Yah as some kind of fiction book. So that's why it means nothing to us. We may say that it means much, but when a tree is watered properly, when it is pruned properly, you will see the abundance of the beauty of the fruit of that tree. And when we are not pruned properly, uh, then we grow all kinds of wild branches and branches, uh, and the fruit becomes as we can see on the pear trees that are over here. They have no taste, they have no beauty, they have no succulents that one can delight in. We are people that's barren our hearts because there's such a plethora of iniquity in the heart of Yah's people. It is the spirit of Ovon, Ovim. There is such perverseness in us. Our minds are so contaminated. And just like the masterful skills of, of Hashatan. You get insulted. You get upset. As he said to Chava the day that you decide what you want to consume in your flesh. Then you can challenge Yah. And that's why we challenge everything today. I want to read. But I'm going to take my time. I, I don't care how you feel. I want to read this. It is the simplicity of Yah's instructions 
that we have the difficulties with because we are an infructuous, a rebellious, a stiff neck, and a hard headed people. Our minds are so convoluted and perverse. We can't even hear what is pure. We can't even discern the objectivity of Almighty Yah. That's why everyone is going their own ways that seems right to them. You can see death among Israel that is so pronounced, so profound. There is no liveliness in it at all. Our obedience, our delights in the Torah of Yah, that we have the Hafez of Yah, that we uh, rejoice, that we are privileged that He would even speak unto us. We have such disdain for the order of Yah that His true messengers today, uh, they don't mean a damn thing. So when individuals find those that are shallow and superficial, because you are superficial. You like those that are superficial. You don't want anyone to challenge your wickedness and to show you the blights of your own damn wicked mind. So we tend to hang in our conclaves of corruption. And we speak evil. You're not getting by. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We say to you, that the riches of your rest upon you, his healing power, shall rest upon you this Shivats. I want to read this. I won't even tell us where it's at. Because it is like a passing moment. It enters into our minds. It does not at all have an effect in us. For we truly hear the imra, the speech, when Yah enunciates his will unto us, then it makes a change. It is like a child hearing the parent, the parents. When they speak, you see the change. As a young lads, when I would do things to infringe upon my mother, she would say things to me, although they were callous things, and they would hurt deeply in my bosom as a young lad. I would always find me a place that I could steal off with no one, and I would ponder what she would say to me, because I did not want to inflict upon her the kinds of miseries that she was enduring, I wanted to be, as one would say, a lovely child, unquote. And what that would do when she would speak unto me in such a vilifying way, it would cause me to do things that I knew that pleased her, even in a more pronounced way. I, I would delight in doing that to receive her accolades uh, of appreciation. And as I grew into a man, I will never forget one of the things that she pronounced unto me. She said, I wish all of my children were like you. You don't cause my heart to weep. You cause me no agony. I wish they all were like you. Well, what am I but a mess? Of degenerate filth. It is only by the mercies of Almighty Yah that uh, He would consider us. And for Him to consider us, and then we do not even consider Him, uh, something is twisted in our damn minds. We are corrupt, we are wicked. And we don't want to be confronted with our evil, our sadistic, wicked ways. And evil people. And the results of that evil shall come upon you. Your sons and your daughters are not worth a damn. They're twisted and vile and corrupt. They curse the very one 
that you think you know because you have cursed him as well. You know the word barach? When a daughter, a son says to one another, Ya barach. It has an implication that may the ears of Yah bow to you, may he bow down before you. Or it's either implying, may the damnation of Yah rest upon your vile soul and you actually rock one another. And you know that your heart is vile, filthy. We are an ignorant people. Because we defy Yah. I want to read this. Some things I'm going to read. I am. And no one is going to impede me. I don't give a damn about the weariness of our flesh. Impel it. Destroy your vile, filthy spirit. And your flesh. And the loss of our damned, slothful nature. You can tell the magnitude of the strength of any man by his walk, his presentation. The same thing with the bath. It is our own as well. I want to read quickly. I did not offer up the offering of prayer before service. I will. Because I want us to be in total compliance as to what Yah commands. I want to read from the book. When Shilomo had built this beautiful bayat, this house of Yah, and the house of Yah has been built in the bosom of Yisrael, Yahshua came to destroy all the works of hell and to impart into Yisrael the power of the Ruach HaChodash. The mind, the laba of Yah, that we may speak with him and talk with him. It will be a sad occasion that when this lad grows to maturity, that he cannot converse with his avat and understand the commands of his voice, and yet we don't hear. We don't understand a damn thing because. It is our wickedness that prevents us from even understanding how to love. Don't tell me you love me. I don't want you to tell me that. You can speak that falsism to others, but don't tell me. All right? I like it when you're quiet. You, my friends, here, for the Re'ach HaChodash, speaks to Yisrael. It says in the writing of the Sefer, Yah says, but I have I have elected, I have chosen Yerushalayim. I have chosen Yerushalayim. For in the beginning, his name was written in Shiloh. Silo, Shilo, Shilo. Yah says, I have Bacham. I have painstakingly by my own election, but my own mental power to unlock and to choose, I have Bacham. Yerushalayim. That my Hashem, my name, may be Sham. It's amazing at the expression of Yah's words, that it may be Sham, it may be there, henceforth, from here, eternally, that my name may be there. He said, and I have chosen, I have Baha, I have elected thy weeds to be over my, uh, my, uh, my, people of my election. This is what the book says. I don't give a damn what man says. Yah says, I have elected thy weeds not to be under, but to be over 
my yeah, my people, my am, my elect, I have chosen him. It has not come by your rituals of election, but this is the man that I have chosen, although because his hand was full of blood, full of dumb, full of sin, I have elected from his bosom the one that shall build the bed where I shall put my name. And out of the lineage of Dawi, we see the power of this Hamashiach, Yeshua, where he has put his name. To assure Yisraya of his power to deliver, to break every yoke of darkness, to set the captive free, and to give liberty unto Yisraya that we may prosper in the ways of Derech, as we must halach, walk with purity of heart in the commands of the Torah of Omariya. He says, if they sin, if they hata against you, if we sin against Yah, for there is no man that sins not, there is no man whose hands are unspotted from the hata that they have missed the way. They have flagrantly defied Yah with the assault and abuse against him. But Yah commands us to be kindly affectionate. And this damn Jezebel spirit upon Yisraya, we are not that way. We are flagrantly defying the commands of Yah. And out of the gates of hell you shall live. I'm going to teach something on Wednesday, Khadve Imant. It is one thing that you must have. Yeshua said that he that endures unto the end. We are not enduring anything. This is a wicked generation. This is a generation without the knowledge of Yom. Because we despise truth. We despise knowledge. Because there's one thing that truth will do. It will always deal with your damnable, twisted, vile, insidious, wicked ways. They will let you know you don't give a damn. You are a deceiver. You are a liar. You are corrupt. And you are as vile as hell. And because we don't receive that love of the teaching of the Torah, he gives you to every kind of damn perverted vile affection uh, that one can imagine in their mind of uh, stupendous stupidity. And you pretend, but you're full of your own crap. You're full of your own damn lies and corruption, Yisrael. The day of reckoning. It is upon the people, Yisrael. I say this to us. <clears throat> if we cannot be faithful, I want to use this, you that are listening as well. If we can't be faithful, if y'all says, Shub, we have to be reminded of that something is not functionally applicable in our minds when it comes to the Torah. But you don't think of yourself that way. You think very little of me and others, but you think very highly of yourself. I don't want your love because it's not worth a damn. It has no value. It does not produce any kind of strength because if you love Yah as you love yourself, I would see strength in Yisra'ya among his people, whether here or scattered abroad. So I don't want your love, all right? I'm not offended because you don't love me. I'm not offended at all. Hallelujah. If they sin the hot against you, for there is no man which sins not. And you, oh Maria, are angry, your anath, your tremendous displeasure. As you breathe this sigh of agony upon this people, this naaf, if you are angry, if you are displeased with them, and if you know fun, you deliver them, you bestow upon them the power of deliverance, 
He has bestowed upon Israel the revelation he has no fun. He has granted unto us the wisdom of Yahshua HaMashiach in a profound living way. That we don't even appreciate that, Yisrael. And if you not thumb, if you deliver them over unto their Oyeb, their enemies, what is one of the most obstinate, hardest enemies against Yah? It is your own love, your own mind. You defy what he says when you know it's right to do. And we don't do it. There's wickedness beyond your ability to eradicate. That's why you never, we never progress. That's why we never mature. You have said, I will turn them over to the enemies, and they shall be carried away in Sheba captivity. Our minds are captive today. The enemy of this world, the enemy of Yeshua HaMashiach, he has created such delusions in our minds, such lust and such greed, that our minds are under captivity. Uh, of the system of Babel of confusion. That your mind never considers Yah. You don't even think about him. And for you to challenge me on that. You are a blatant liar. He is not at the forefront of our minds. He is not the frontlet of our perception. It is not the Torah that narrow our views upon life uh, and everything in this life. We are damned of a wicked if we say that I am lying. You will know the tree that has been planted by the rivers of water, not just a river. There are seven powerful rivers of water that flow from the bosom of, Yis uh, of your Almighty Yahweh. It is the river of Chukmah wisdom. It is the river of his Binah. It is the river of his Yare. It is the wisdom of his Shakal, his prudence, his wiseness. When the rivers flow from us, when they flow from the rock, there's one thing about waters that flow over rocks or the aquatic flowing of water under the ground it is the rocks that purges out and cleanse and gives you this sense of pure water when the glaciers or the water flows down the mountains in Colorado and California where 90 percent of the drinking waters come from when it reaches to its descents it is a pure water it is a pure water. And when we allow this flowing of truth to flow over our hearts, our hearts are hardened. He will take out the stony heart. And once he finished that circumcision, he will give us a heart of flesh. I'm not going to make friends. That's all right. You're sure didn't have a 12 when he left. <clears throat> he said, you're my friends because the abbot knows not what the master does. But I tell you all things. You are my friends. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said they shall carry you away to a land that is far off or either near. Regardless of where the land is. I mean those that have been brought to this nation from a far land. From the land of inheritance of the people of Yah. It is one thing that when Yah utilizes the rod of Sheba, a Shabi, Shabuth, to bring upon this exiling of his people to exile them, it is only for one thing. It is for discipline. 
That's why over the years when there have been those that blatantly, defiantly sin and transgress willingly against Yah, I will never embrace. It was some time before I embraced them. I will never give them a hand, shake of assurance. I will not do that. I will not lay my hand suddenly on them at all. Period. You will lay your hands on some of the vilest of wicked ones. Your faggot sons and daughters and kinsmen. And you will lay your hands on them to give them an assurance of your concern. When it comes to Yisra'ya, you don't give a damn. We simply don't give a damn. But a twisted mind. <clears throat> Yah says, yet, if they, zakhah, if they think, it's in your thoughts during your day, or oh, we're great pretenders, You must understand that as a man thinketh, so is the man. It's like a wife if she thinks of the beauty of being a wife. <clears throat> and she wants to display that so as she thinketh, uh, that is what you will see about that woman. If she thinks like a Jezebel, you will see the fruit of that. You said it's a lie. It's the truth. It's a lie. It's the truth, son. I'm just playing cat and mouse with you, not playing. As a man thinketh, as a woman thinketh, so is. You all said if they would think. We don't give a damn, we don't think. This generation doesn't give a damn about young. We have deceived our damnable twisted heart so this is not what I want to preach today. I'm going to preface things. I will get into the teaching that I want to teach. He says unto Yisra'ya, yet if they think, if they think of their errors, Do you literally think of your errors? You can define your ach or your halt error, but do you think? It is one thing over the many years I've preached, very few people have come to me and say to me, I'm a dirty bastard slip. I'm a dirty dog. I'm not going to lie to you. I talk to myself that way all the time. I talk to me like that all the time. We are an indignant, self-righteous pack of damn hypocrites. I talk to me like that all the time. I talk to me like that all the time. You are a damnable, dirty, wicked bastard. When we infringe upon Yah in any way, there's an era of Russia wickedness. We're acting out of criminal intentions. If Yah says, clap your hands, then you do it. It should not even be a consideration. We're so ashamed of him, we don't even do what he commands us. I don't give a damn if you don't like me. If they think of their errors in the land, their heart of the sin, that they are carried shiva, are captive, he says, if they turn, just shub. To make teshuva. Repent, not to repent again. We do wrong. No, we're doing wrong. And we constantly repeat the same errors. Something is wrong in our spiritual and mental makeup. I don't give a damn who you try to guard. This is my body. I will guard my body 
from the approach of darkness. But I will expose my body as well. And the nakedness of my body. But this is a generation that has no shame at all. Because it doesn't give a damn. It will sin. It will blatantly defy the Torah. And their conscience are so damned. Seared. It doesn't even trouble them at all. If we think of our era. In this land. When our errors are pointed out. We get angry as hell. We get upset with God. We defy him. If they would consider the errors in the land where they are carried captive, and if they should turn, turn around. If they turn around, and he says, I want them not just to pala, make tefirath. I want them to make khana, khana, khana. It is a supplication of deep groaning, and crying, travailing against your own will, your own flesh. Don't tell me you lahak. You don't study. You don't study the book. You don't have that mental and spiritual exhortation of your mind. You don't. You love Walmart more than you love the book. You love the damn chit shots. He said that if they would Hanan to make deep supplication of yearning and tears of passion and crying unto me, to you, Yah, in the land of their Sheba, saying, I have sinned. We have sinned. You know the infractions of everyone but your own. You know the infraction of everyone but your own. You can retain what everyone says, but you never retain what you say. I have a precious art that he says things, and I said, no, you said that. And he will say, did I say that? Sure. You said that. I know what you said. I'm listening. And his only strength is that he will repent of that. I'm sorry. I didn't know I said it. And I say the reason you said it and you don't know, because there is one factor in your life that you're missing. You don't know how to hear. You don't listen. Your mind speaks before you hear. I can hear the pattern of one speech and I know what the end shall be. Because the Ruach of Yah, it is the discerner, the Torah in one's bosom. It discerns the very thought and the intent of one's bosom. Yeah. <clears throat> and we don't even discern what's in us as a nation of people. If they would Hana to make great supplications and say we have sinned and we have done an ava or a miss. We will not tell you that I am twisted. That's what the word uh, ava is. To say I'm twisted. I'm perverted. And I am corrupt. I have a miss. Not that I thought. No. You are a miss. You are a lie. You are twisted. You have distorted the matter. It's amazing the power of words and how words confuse the mind. When one does not understand the linguistic of the definitive of the word. On Yom Rishon, I spent about five hours. I'm not boasting in that. Researching one word, to dig to the depths, to the tilt of hell, to find more understanding. 
That's what I do in my downtime. I have literally, over this month, probably 10, 12 messages I put together that I will probably never preach. I was speaking to Ach Shimri one day. I said, you know, now there are men in what we call the Baptist whorehouses. Men are so juvenile that if someone says, take this, here are some scriptures, preach from that. They want to convey that uh, by my own labor I've come up with something. You are silly and stupid man. When the Baptist preaches by books that give them sermonettes for a course of a year, they're developed by men that have a knowledge or a deeper understanding of the writing of the stroll and that have taken time studiously to develop a program that would assist them to enhance their ability to convey a more deliberate approach or message to the people that would give them some kind of solution in life. And yet I find among Israel, I find among his people, I've dealt with that in the past, that men, they tend to go a different route. That is sad. Not every man has the same ability. Not every man can articulate and bring forth things like the other man. But yet if the man is wise, he will receive from that man and he will proceed in the same path as that man. Same thing with the daughter Tizayon. Can I say this? I'm going to be here a while today, so you might as well relax. I was thinking this morning, yesterday, one of the days, I said to Almighty Yah, I said, of all the years I've been associated with this issue, this woman, I can honestly say, She's never complained to me about this or not having that, wanting to do this, desiring that. She has never, she has not complained to me. And I consider that, I say, yeah, this is the strength of a man's life. She has never in all the years I've known her to come into my house, to vilify me, to complain, not about one achot. She has never critiqued and criticized one ach, never. I said, yeah, she has never been a woman. I could have had someone that wanted this kind of lifestyle. Wanted this because that one possessed that? Yes. She has never. Yeah. And it has not been a burden on me at all that I would have to wrestle with that kind of a mind. And because of that, I've had the liberty to teach yeah. and to preach and to bring things out that I don't even know. I will do that today, all right? Yeah. I appreciate that. I appreciate that more than anything. I've never said that to her. But I was pondering a matter I don't recall. But I thought if she had to sleep in the open air with me, she would. Wherever I had to go, she would go. She would not complain. And that's the truth. I don't give a damn whether you believe it or not. You don't even believe the word of Yah. So hell, you're not going to believe a testimony of truth anyway. So I don't give a damn. All right? If we say to Yah, we have done things in Ava, in a mess. We have operated in a distorted, misled precept and concept. We are wicked. 
we have done wickedly. Uh, we have defied the order and the way that you command us to go. It is one thing that we must get in all of our getting. Wisdom uh, is principle, but we must get understanding of all things. Uh, if someone on a job says something to you, uh, you go to cut a tree, you're not sure, you ask. You say to my woman all the time, if you don't understand what I said, you ask me. I don't want you thinking what I said. I talk like that too. I thought, no, you didn't think anything. Because I conveyed what I wanted. I made it clear. Now if you don't understand, you ask. And so what our damnable twisted minds began to do, we began to format. Out of our own ills and our wickedness, things that are not there. I don't give a damn if you don't like me. What is that daughter's name? What's her name? Helena? Her name was Helena. All right, my achot. Helena, she's a retired individual. And this is Riach Daiwit Yisra'ah at his words, all right? And so we began to wash things through a twisted, convoluted mind. And if there's anything that arouses me and causes my wrath to rise in my home, it is when she takes upon something and think she's doing what I said without asking me, do you understand? That's why God gives us messengers and men that he has elected by the wisdom of Yeshua Hamashiach. And he has poured out his gifts to bring us into the perfect order of your Torah, Yisrael. Now that makes me angry. That gets me angry. We have done things in a mess. He goes on to say in this writing, he says to Yisrael, if they return, make Teshuva repent, acknowledge their ways, like the publican. We're just like the push or the Pharisees. Look at me. I'm right. I'm nice. You're not nice. You have a Jezebel spirit. You're Jezebel. I'm kind to the ark. You're not kind, man. You don't give a damn. I fast three days a week. I'm a man that my concepts of Torah have been developed by some of the most prudent of men. And Yah says you are a piece of hogs shysting. And the one that the publican that had power to exact pressure on people, he smote himself. We never smite ourselves. We don't do that. We are well equipped to smite others. I say that again, we never smite ourselves. Yeshua took the smiting for Yisrael. He smote himself on his breast. And he says, I have a vow, what am I? You see, that man, what are we justified more than the one that kept every letter of the Torah? Because he was self-grandizing and wicked. Something is wrong with us as a people. When we can see the infractions or we can interpret what others do or say, and we don't even interpret our own twisted, damnable heels. What I say to the Ima and the daughters, the bath of Tizayon, to work with the young women, the reason they have never done that through the years, and if one does that, they become very hostile and offended at the one that will do that. Because you know what? They will never do that. 
because they don't work on themselves. They don't give a damn about themselves. I've watched those that have worked with the young daughters here. And I've watched the insanity of the ignorance of the damnable twisted parents rise up. You might as well clap. It is the truth. And the reason they will not work with the bath of desire because they don't give a damn. I don't give a damn how they say they care. You're a beast of hell and you're a liar. When one cares for someone, they do things. I like to do things to show my I, I care. That's me. I like to do that. I like to do things for my, ah, oh, my friend. I've always, and when someone never in their life desire to show a care, something is wrong, ah, oh, here. There's not a time that I leave, and I don't leave often when I go preach. That's when I come home. There are wonderful little things. The last time I came home now, I don't even buy that, but I certainly did not turn it down. And it caused me to jump up every hour to run to the restroom. I had some of those yamika organic ginger ale. I love ginger ale, but I don't buy it. Very infrequently will I drink something like that. I just don't drink it. But when I saw that, I'm like, I'm not going to turn it down. And so my little patron here, she sees everything that I have, and she's ready for some of that. I want some of this. I want some of that. It's so much I cannot consume it. So but we don't even consider. Does y'all consider? Yeah. Yahweh gave it all. In your shoe, did he not give us all? Oh, to him I owe. See, it is the sin and our own wickedness. Because we don't examine our own selves, it is difficult for us to do what he commands. So, that's why it's difficult for you, instead of turning to what Yerushalayim, you stand and you look. He did not say that. He did not say your eye in. He did not say in your mental uh, discerning. Uh, he says, I want you to first of all return. Hallelujah. No, you do it one time, I can deal with that. You do it twice, there's something there. You do it three times, I know uh, that there is something wrong uh, in your bosom. If they return to Yah, he says, with all, all their love and with all of their nephesh, we have not done that. We will give our strength unto every kind of wicked thing there is. We practice wickedness. And Yah's will, I will get to that while we operate that. We practice some of the most insidious, sadomasochist type of practices and activities that cannot be imagined in a mind that has any sentility of purity and sadiq. We become hideous looking. Our physical bodies are ugly. Our minds are ugly. Because he also says to the bath that is I owned, yeah. he will beautify them, his tifra, with the beauty of meekness. Yeah. That's the beauty of Yah. And it brings about an expression, a, a light, and an all that is beyond any kind of physical attraction. That's when everyone perceives you, whether it's male or female. They would say, what a beautiful daughter. What a beautiful son. As the khatve says, 
that Dawid was ruddy, but the word ruddy that he was tefarah. He was ruddy and comely. He was beautiful. He was a beautiful lad. He was a beautiful lad. And Yah beautifies his house. He cleanses us. When he brought Yisra'ah out of Misraim, he cleansed them. We're filthy and we're dirty. Because we do things in Ava, we will not say that I'm distorted. He is, but not me. She is, but not me. She's unkind, but not me. You're unkind. You don't give a damn about me. And because you don't give a damn about me, you don't give a damn about anyone else. And that is simply the culmination of one's cold heart being built block by block or sin by sin because you don't give a damn about Yah. Yeah. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm going to finish my course. My day is going to run short one day. My strength, it shall dissolve. I understand that. I want to lay down some of the most profound principles. I have so much to teach. But your minds are not yet ready to hear it. And that is the truth. Your sure said, I have many things. Not a few things. He said, I have me all, not me as. I have me all abundant, raw, raw, many things uh, beyond the ability of your mind uh, and the minds of your collectively to understand, uh, to teach you. But I just cannot teach you. You're not even ready. When our filth, our uncleanliness is the first thing that Yah sees, you know something is wrong. This is the Shabbat. This is the Shabbaton. And among Israel, Yah, we're weighed down with every kind of twisted sin it is. He says, if they return to you, this is the Nobi, the word of Yah. If they return unto you, if they turn unto you with all of their love, with all of their nefesh in the land of their Shabu's captivity, that they are carried Sheba, we have been brought here in captivities or captive. Yeshua came to set the captive free. He came to set the captive free. And he led those that were in captivity. He captured them and he led them into the promises of Abraham. When he went down into the lower parts of the earth. And that's why the Torah of Yah must go down in the lower parts of our damnable, twisted, insidious working. And once that happened, that's what that represents. You're sure going down into the lower parts of the earth to set at liberty those that were captive. And when the power of Torah reached out into the lower parts of this earthen vessel of our damnable twisted hearts, it will set the captive free. It's not reaching there. We're dumb. These people are dumb as hell. They're stupid. You don't give your time. Yeah, I like to play basketball at time, but I like to hit the book. And there are times that my Isha will come and she will say to me, when well, you coming to bed, well, I am not a 9 p.m. man, 9.30 either. But I know there are times that I must come to bed as I'll be there. Give me 15 minutes. I know that's 30 minutes or maybe an hour. I know that. But there must be a devotion. I said to Akshimri, I said, we were spending a little time together when you're in love. I said, I'm going home, take me a bath, and I will study to midnight. That is not to show you that I have some kind of proudness, but this is real to me. It may not be real to you, but it's real to me. 
You may not be sincere, but I'm saying, I don't give a damn if you don't think I'm sincere. I don't care what this world says. I will give you all a report, a, an eduth that came a testimony at the close today. I said, I'm going to sit here to 12 midnight and just study, look at things. Well, I'm looking at the same thing, just one or two words, examining the Torah. I didn't make it until about 1030 because uh, she beckons and uh, when are you coming to bed and so the times that I must lay down. It is nothing about what we think of this form and activity of what we believe is intimacy. That's not intimacy. It is just simply the comfort of the ruach of my ish. Shaw. Just that. It has nothing to do with the other activities. Just that. And it's beautiful. That's why he has to have a wife. Give her a husband. Have an up there in. I read his letter last night. Isn't it sad that a man must go to the far east? He's in the Philippines to try to find a wife who can find a wife. He's been there for two months. He says, I will be in Yerushalayim, in Jefferson, South Carolina, for sukkah. And as I promised, I will bring some, some stuff, red snapper, Caribbean style. I'm traveling here in the Far East, meeting old friends and meeting new friends. He has no issue. He discussed with me a daughter at one time from the Philippines. It's sad. Because you that should be the Ima of Yisrael, you have failed. That's why you have learned the ways of these damn twisted Jezebels uh, in the vile Baptist whole house. Uh, they want to come in and strut their damn stuff. Uh, they got on their frock. They think they look better than everyone. Uh, they think that they're more dressed. They think that their clothing make a statement. Don't tell me I'm wrong. I know what I'm saying. They're arrogant and haughty as hell uh, because you don't have what they have uh, and you have learned the way of this whore. Well, you damn Baptists and Methodists, uh, you damn the Pentecostals. Uh, you have learned that well. Uh, they didn't give a damn about you uh, and you don't give a damn about no one. Uh, you damn filthy Jezebel. Uh, that's why you don't give a damn about your daughter and your daughter's daughters. I love to fight, and I'm a fighter. I have no problem with fighting now. Just make sure you hit hard. Because if you don't hit hard, you make me angry. When I get angry, then you're gonna make me do some damage. So make sure you hit hard. You have learned the ways of the Baptist whores and the Methodist whores. The Pentecostal, the apostolic. And they go to their Baptist whole houses. And every woman is trying to outdress every woman. And they think it's a beauty. You're not beautiful. You look like a damn beast of hell. And they don't give a damn as to teach the young daughters. And we have brought that spirit unto Yah. And it's wrong. And so today, my young daughter, as I would say to my imam, you do not teach your daughter the beauty of a woman. So she doesn't know. And so you criticize her when you should be criticizing yourself, mama. She would always get quiet when I would talk. She would get quiet when I talk. Just like that, we would play on this harp for Shaul when I talk. 
When you're permitting me to talk, you could hear rat urinates on cotton. She was quiet. And it made, made her uh, began to function in this introspective search of her own bosom. I said, you created the door. And my sister, my natural sister, she's miserable today. I feel sorry for her. Once a year, she'll call me. And that's at the time of my birth. She will do that. She always tells me she loves me. I said, I don't want to hear that. I feel sorry for her. And that's why I had said to Ach, Zakin, Yeshai, if he starts a work, she's an excellent cook. She'll come, give her a little place in the back. She'll cook. Maybe Yas will. You can help her in a way that I cannot. She will cook. She doesn't want to take care of no children. She said, I don't want to take care of no children, but I'll cook and I'll clean house. I'll do that. Hallelujah. I despise what I see. Sometimes the daughters think it's, there's some funniness to what I say. I don't say things to be funny. I don't get up here like a jackass of a clown and grin and laugh. I don't tell damn jokes. I had a daughter to write me the other day. And her heart was just weeping. She says to me, Ria, what do I do? The assembly I attend, the preacher, he gets up, he tells jokes. He talks about farting and just making the people laugh. She said, I respect him much and I love him. But what do I do in these situations? He tells you to be here at a certain time. He's never there. He tells you we're going to do this. He, she says, his words have no value at all. And he loves to clown and to joke. I'm not a joker. Those that love to last, the joker was the only one that had the right to go before the king and call him a jackass. And so I don't say anything funny. I don't say anything that amusing. I say things uh, to strike down uh, into the vile of our wicked hearts. You have learned the Baptist ways well. The Baptists don't give a damn. That's why you don't give a damn. We don't care. What it would have been like to have a young, beautiful daughter at maybe 30 years old. Maybe 35. Or a sluttish little whore. That I would say, get out of my face. Hallelujah. I move quickly. That's all right. I got the enemy's head. If they return to you, Yah, with all of their love, we don't love him with all of our hearts. We don't love him with all of our mind. We don't give strength unto Yah. With all of our nephesh in the land of their captivity, where they have been carried captive, he said, and if they, if they, Yisra'ah, Bala, Bala, pray to intercede, with intercessory, if they pala toward in the derrick, toward their land. Now you hear that? I show you again. I want all you all to look. We pray toward the land because when captivity, it's not for you to do this and turn that way. It's not for you to make a slight turn. It is for you to turn toward Yerushalayim. You in your homes, you can buy your little $2 compass out of the dollar store. And you can find where the east is in your apartment, your home. He said, if they turn towards. Toward is derech, the way. The way to Yerushalayim, you go this way, you will never get that. You travel this way, you will never get to Yerushalayim. If you travel this way, as long as you travel this way, you will get to Yerushalayim. If we travel according to the diction, the dictates of Yah, we will get 
to the place that he has preserved and prepared for Yisraya. We don't think that that is a form of rebelliousness and stubbornness, but it is. Can I ask you parents a question? You that have raised your sons and daughters, if you say to them one time, Ahava, I want you to go sit down. So she stands there. You get her by the hand and say, sit down. Now the next time you say that, Ahava, I want you to sit down and she doesn't respond, then you know something. It's time for correction. So it is a time to correct us all in here, you understand? If they would turn toward, not like this and that, turn toward. Yerushalayim. Turn toward. Yerushalayim. They would pray toward their land. Which Yahweh has given to their avat, not only toward their land, he says, and I want them to pray toward the city Yerushalayim, which you have Bacha elected and chosen. I don't care what. The state of it now is miserable and is horrible, isn't it? Isn't that the truth? Look at your state. Look at your state. That's one reason we don't like to look at each other because it reflects. It shows your dishonesty. And see, I can look at her and there's reflection of dishonesty I, and my wrongful way of doing things. Our attention span is not long. That's why the parent, my parenting as I was raised, he would say, look at me, boy. Look at me, girl. Look at me. They could tell when you were deceitful and full of lies and corrupt. Come here, boy, and look at me. They could tell. It is the truth, O oh man. They could tell. Look at me. You can tell when they were lying and deceitful. Turn your eyes upon Yahshua because we don't look at him. We don't want to look at him. So my daughter says last night, you're beautiful. Toda, my friend. I appreciate that. I don't get that that often. Believe me. And I don't want that that often. But the way she said it, it had a beauty to it. See, you're so beautiful. But it made me read what Yeshaya and Yahshua said from Yohahan. Hallelujah. If we turn toward the city, again, Yisrael, you that are listening in your homes, you find the east. Did not say if you turn your head, but if you turn. Toward derech, the way, the path, toward. That's what he says. We've tried everything else, haven't we? Then let's take note of this simple act that he commands us. He says this. They turn toward the city and the bayat, which I have built for your name. Your shoe has solidified the works of Yerushalayim and the tabernacle of Yah when he, as the messenger, as the elect of Yah, to bring that which was hidden from us, he bring it to light and to assure the sealing 
of the name of every child of Yisrael. As I read last night of the book of Thessalonica, it says when Mikhail, when Mikhail, when he stands up, when he stands up, he will signify that all Yisrael is sealed. And then there shall be a time known as Yaakov trouble. And as Yaakov wrestled with the Melach, he did not get the new name until he had won the battle. And no more shall your name be called Yaakov the supplanter, but it shall be called Yisrael. Will not prevail. Are we prevailing in our sins? Are we prevailing against our own will, Yisrael? We are filthy. We are filthy people. We have not bathed ourselves in the nitre or the nitre of Yah. We are not cleansed. Yeshua says, and yet there is one of you that dip in the bowl with me. You are not yet clean. There is no tahor. And we are not. We are not clean. We are not clean. You are not clean. That's why we do filthy things. We can do dirty things because we're not clean. I'm not here to soothe your damn wicked mind that hates Yah. You hate Yah because you have disdain for any instruction. You become mute when something is said that will show you the direct path and the way to go. You are so damn sensitive. It's a characteristic of no strength at all. This is the time you press and you rejoice. To the pure as Azokhin Machaliya, I mean, Yaramiya was trying to teach us on Khadve Imat. That there should be a constant response unto Yah what He does and how He does it. We don't give a damn. That's why we don't constantly respond unto Him because we have dignified ourselves above Yah and the Word of Yah is a reproach unto us and we don't give a damn. We don't want His mercy. Oh, don't correct me. Yeah. Correct everyone else. Yeah. I'm above that. Yeah. When my mother would correct me, it would make me think. Believe me, I would think. And, and you know what it would make me do above all things? It would make me show appreciation to her in a way. Man, I would go out and hustle. I wanted to show her. I would bring her a gift. I'm not lying to you all. I knew how to hustle. I would go out and hustle and make a... In the 60s, if you make $2, you had some money. I could buy a meal for the whole house for two dollars. I would keep the house impeccably clean. And one of the jobs that everyone despised that was the grind of the toilet working that. The men, their urine, you know how that is. And yet, uh, I would take, we didn't have the brush, I would take an old rag and I would get in that thing and I would mop the floor by hand. Even when I got out of the military to move back into my Amos home until I got me an apartment, I would mop the floor by hand. I would wait until everyone was asleep. Midnight, I would clean the entire house. So I would do things because although that her words were sharp, and although her reproof was not kind in the sense, the names that she called me, she should not have called me those names. And yet I would do things in the kinds of beatings she would put upon me. It was, it was not even sensible to beat a child that way. But it did make me hate her. It didn't do that. It did not make me want to, not want to speak to her. We are a generation that when our little damn juvenile feelings are encroached upon, we don't even want to come around someone. We don't even want to speak to them. That's how childish this generation is. And I'm talking to you. That didn't make me. I would talk to my Ema. You clean the house up for me, boy. Thank you so much. Oh, that would just do wonders. It was like medicine. 
So my bosom when she would do that. It made me happy. It did. Because it did not take long for the disarray to come again. So it is in our lives. We turn towards. Yeah. We turn toward. Not look. We turn that way. I'm going to put the sign that says Yerushalayim. Turn toward. And you turn that way. If you keep that path, whether you go over water or land, you will get, as Martin Luther King said, to the promised land. That's the only promised land for Israel. Yeah. Not Stone Mount, Georgia. <clears throat> That's the only promised land unto the Bacha, the elect. Though that he has chosen before the foundation of the earth, elected us even before the forming of our mother's womb, he elected a people that he called uh, his own. So we must turn toward. Not looking this way, looking that way, but turn to Shub toward Yerushalayim. And we should offer up Pala, Tefillah, Hanan. We should offer up that unto Almighty Yah. He goes on to say that uh, toward the bed where my name is, uh, he said, then uh, here, Hashem, uh, the heavens. He said, even from your dwelling place, uh, he said, their prayers, the tefillah, and their hanan, the supplications, uh, and that they maintain, you understand to asa, to do, to fashion your mind to do it. When you fashion your mind not to do it, you take no delight in doing it. When you don't fashion your conscience according to Torah, to the dictates of Yah, it becomes a burden. Is that difficult to turn? And see, if we're not faithful in the small things, who in hell are going to entrust you with the great riches? And if we're not faithful in that, you think that Yah's not going, he's going to entrust you? Not with one damn thing. So that's why we are poor. It's sad. The riches of Yah, and we are made destitute and desolate. He took a peeper out, did not have to buy one rag of clothing. Shoes grew on their feet. No bunions, no ingrown, no doctor call, just a sin call. And he gave them a land of promise. The word promise is daba. As the old one would say, my word is my bond. That's why his daba is his promise. When old man and an old woman said that their word was their bond, they were not retract even to their loss or gain. They would not go back on their word. And that's what Yah is saying that I promise, I spoke, my imra, my speech was uttered unto Abraham, and out of him shall Yisrael be barach, they shall be blessed. Out of Yitzhak and Yaakov, because also out of Abraham's bosom, also out of uh, his lineage came, uh, what's his name? I know his name. Tell me. The other son of Haggai. Ishmael. Also came out of him was Ishmael. And the blessings are in Yitzhak and Yaakov. He granted unto Ishmael. What did he grant him? He gave him what? He gave him a nation. But he gave Israel other nations. We are jackass of a people. We are poor. We are ignorant. We are stupid as hell. Because we want someone to appease our wicked, dirty flesh. We are slothful. We are lazy as hell. You could tell the conscience and the strength of a man's mind or a woman's mind by their activities, their willingness. You can tell what's in one. 
Lazy ass man, there's nothing there. A lazy ass woman, there's nothing there. The daughter that's high yell, she looks to work with her hands. I will, man. The one that is slothful and lazy as hell, she doesn't look. The man that is of a high old man, he has, uh, he sweat from his face. Can, you you need to make that song long, okay. Can go around, cannot get around, cannot go around. The Torah of Yah, oh, you cannot go around. You cannot go over it, you cannot go around. The Torah of Yah, this is what is written. It is Hattab. Hattab. It is in stripes. In the Sefer. In the stroll. The book. What book? Yahshua is the book. It is written in the bosom of Yahshua. If you have that testimony, you delight in this. You rejoice in the Torah of Yah. You rejoice in the word. And don't tell me you rejoice. We look like a pack of damnable, distorted, deadhead people. There's no light among us. There's no awe. Because your sin, it is the sin of our conscience, our minds, uh, that give us the darkness of our countenance, uh, the darkness of our expression. I was thinking this morning, I said, you know, there are men and women that there, even their skin is so beautiful. When I was there in Duluth, the man that I know there, he says, look at my skin, Riach. He said, look at it. And he had such beautiful skin. He really did. I didn't see the cradles like mine or the bumps here. He had such healthy, and beautiful, and rich skin. You ever seen anyone like that? I have. I've seen men black as sut, and their skin was rich and beautiful. I've seen women that are so black. That their skin was so beautiful and it, it was a light to them. We are people that there's a shadow because of our sins and our wickedness. And that's a fact. And that is the truth. We're so concerned with the exterior that we are nothing but rottenness and putrefied stench in our bosom. That's why man must travel the world to try to find a wife. And that's the truth. Yah says he will make a man in this day more precious than the gold of Oprah. A man, not a boy, but a man. A man, one that you're sure is the authoritarian of his conscience. What you're sure speaks, he obeys. What you're sure says, he delights in it. That's what Yah says. You can wrestle with that any way you want to. I really don't give a damn, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're well at pretending what we are. But the proof is in the bosom, Yisrael. Yah says, and they shall maintain, they shall fashion their cause after the Torah. And Yah says, and I will shalach. Forgive, I will pardon my people which have sinned against me. He said, I will pardon you. What? So just turn. Not here, not here, not here, not here, but here. Hallelujah. 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 You know why we're not complicit with that? I want to give us a descriptive of Yah's people. And then I will proceed into what I really want to teach on next week. It's almost when one is building or preparing to build, you must do all the preparation or the prep work first. You all don't see your daughters, your baptisms, or your own. You don't see what it goes into building a building or to build it like this or block building like that. It's a tremendous amount of preparation. You got to lay out the footing. 
You got to pour concrete for that. You got to build the foundation that is solid what you're going to build upon. And it has to be solid. So it takes prep work. It takes digging. It takes the shovels. Uh, and all of those kinds of things uh, to fashion to saw the soul, the surrounding, in a way uh, that when you began to build, you will build upon a solid rock. That's why Yah has to fashion our minds according uh, to the Torah. We've heard from ourselves and our own wickedness so long we can't discern what is right. We have the ability to sad uh, that we continuously regress this raya. You hear what is right and then you turn around like a drunken child and you go back. You cry, you're sorry and you still do the same thing. It is like me being an adulterous man. And I'm caught in my activities and say I'm sorry. But I go back and do it again. And again, I get caught. I'm sorry. That's the way we are. We are an imperious whore. That's what Yah calls us. We are whore without any shame. We will do it in a car. We will do it on the tree. We don't give a damn. We will show our filthiness. We don't give a damn where it's exposed. We will do it. We're not a dignified people. I have no, no pride. But I'm a man of dignity. That I am. I'm a man of dignity. And I'm a dignified man. I am a dignified man. No, I have no gaun. I don't esteem myself. I'm not one of majesty. No. But I have dignity and integrity. We live just among Israel. We have opportunity to do tough unto all men. You always esteem others more highly than you esteem yourself. We denigrate. If I have anything that I perceive that my Ach has done, I go to him. I don't care who he is. And what I say to him, concerning him, I say to him. We may discuss it. What I say to him, concerning him, I say to him. What I say to him, concerning him, I say to him. That's a coward ass and a dirty dog that would not do that. I would be a dirty bastard if I didn't do that. Hallelujah. Because that's what the Kadve commands us. If there's, all, there's a matter that you perceive, among Yisraya, then you go to your ach, your chot, and get the matter straight. And then you fall before the altar that your prayers are not hindered. We are dirty, wicked people. We don't do it that way. We'll do it for the world because we have great admiration for the world, don't we? When it comes to Yisraya, damn this world. I have regard for my family. Who is my family? Those that uh, hear the Torah of Yah. Those that dine on it, those that do the will of Yah, damn that clan that is of some physical, sociological, physical structure. It doesn't mean a damn thing to me. It may to you. I've not lost one ounce of sleep wondering what they, them are doing. It's amazing that we will lose sleep off the wicked and those that don't give a damn about you, when it comes to Yisrael, yeah, we're not troubled as to how I've entreated my ach, how I've done him, how I've mistreated my ach, how, how, how I've repro reproached my ach. We don't give a damn about that. It's wrong. I will, man. It's beyond duplicity. It's beyond... Naaf. Hypocrisy. It's beyond hypocrisy. And there is nothing more vile, filthy, and stinking than a dirty dog hypocrite. There's nothing more filthy than a damn hypocrite. I'd rather be a flat out murderer and say I killed him than to be a hypocrite. To have pretense and to pretend. Yabarak. And you don't give a damn. You know you have all against me. 
I'd rather just go boom, 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 drop the gun, wait for the police. Who killed him? I did. Why? <sighs> Man. It was not premeditated. Well, if it's not premeditated, then they cannot give me life. That's the truth. Did you all read in the paper the other day with these two young kids here in Mississippi? They were two Caucasian. They went out looking for a man of the diasporas of color. They found this man at the hotel parking lot. They beat him down. Then they took the car and just ran over him over and over and over again. Killed him. One of the heathens was bailed out of jail for a $5,000 bill. And the judge says this, quote, I can only charge him with assault. He killed a man. He ran over him with a car. He says, assault and battery. He's a murderous bastard. This is how twisted this nation, the concept of this mind that I call the white mind, this is how deluded it is and how it has twisted the minds of the people. I'm going to teach you a little bit here today. I want to read just a little excerpt from an article. Just give me a moment. We're seeing what they call the social network, how that's when Mr. Gaddafi there in Libya and when Mr. Mubarak there in Egypt, Mr. Assad there in Syria, we began to see the tumultuous resistance against government. In all of these fine leaders of what we call the Western powerful dimension, they resonated from their loins and from the nations, let the social networking system start. When the nations were saying, we're going to cut them off, we're going to destroy internet, Mr. Hu there in China, Prime Minister, he says, I cut it off, and yet you don't hear the cry from Britain. When Mr. Sarkozy there in France, when they repudiated Muammar Gaddafi, when they adamantly show their disdain for Haznik Mubarak there in Egypt, when they blatantly continuously batter Mr. Amajinadat there in Iran. Let the social system start. When Mr. Cameroon, a Briton, Mr. Sarkozy, Mr. Obama say leave the internet, let the people talk and gather and fight against your government. Well, there's one thing that I know for sure. You cannot go around, cannot get around, or oh, you cannot get around, Torah of Yah. For the Hashu says, be not deceived. Yah is not deride, he is not ridiculed, he is not mocked. I want you to know for what's of a man soeth that shall he also reap. We began to see the tumultuous uprising there in Britain. They're burning the nation of Afghanistan. And they're butchering people in Libya. They're burning their babies with their bombs and dropping them. 
And all of a sudden we began to see the fire rage in that nation from those that the world says that they're living fine and they have everything. So then Mr. Mubarak said that for his people. Jude Mr. Gaddafi that this bastard mindset that man built a 30 billion dollar system to bring the water to that desert place. Mr. Bota and all of those on the apartheid government of Jueto, the southwestern township, never brought a damn inkling of water to those people. And yet this government substantiated those dirty bastards. When Mr. Stephen Bicho was murdered by these vicious beasts of that government of Buddha. Yet IBM sent hundreds of millions of dollars. The Ford Motor Company. We are a damn dumb people. We love trash. We love folly. We love Walmart and Kmart. But we don't learn a damn thing that would assist Yisra'ya, the people that we get a conscience of the pattern of things. We know how to raise hell. But we don't want no truth, Yisra'ya. And so we see the rising of this tumultuous activity there in Britain. And I'm glad it's coming to America. It's coming to this dirty whore. It's coming to this whore. These men were vilified because they said it is the system that this interchanging and creating these tumultuous activities in our nation, that they're trying to overthrow this government, we cannot allow it. I want to read what Mr. Cameroon, the Prime Minister at number 10 Downey Street there in London, what he, in one of his speeches, said. The Prime Minister, David Cameroon, the Prime Minister of Britain, has signaled a major shift in emphasis on crime policies in the wake of the riots which have affected part of England in the past week. Devastated their economy, the country. Quote, in an emergency meeting with the House of Common, Mr. David Cameroon indicated that the police could be given power to shut down the social network during the time of arrest and widen officers uh, remit to compel people to remove the face covering. And yet with Mr. Gaddafi, he says, you don't shut it down. Mr. Hu of China, he says, don't shut it down. Just like Mr. Putin said the other day, that the Americans are nothing but a pack of damn parasites. That's what he called this nation. They are leeching off the world. They're nothing but damn parasites. Why didn't you drop bombs on his house? Because his bombs are as big as your bombs. And he's a wild man. He'll do his thing too. You ask the people there in Chesnia or in Georgia. We should be some of the most brightest people that even the world should ask counsel of world affairs. I was saying to Aksimion the other day, I'm going to teach you a little bit. How that I would make a system work that everyone would benefit from it. 
everyone. You think you can't do that, man? Well, sure, I know I can. I say, there is only one thing you need to do. And he kind of looked at me. I can tell in his eyes that he wanted to know. He thought he knew, but he didn't know. And I wasn't going to ask him for an answer. I say, can I tell you what I would do? Can I tell you? I said, I would take the value out of money. That's why China, although the people are poor there, look at the map in the dining hall. And the state of China, the landmass, is the same size as the United States of America. There are 1.7 billion people there. Just over 300 million here on, in this country. I say, you take the value of the money out. You have no billionaires. You have no millionaires. You have a home, food, and labor for your back. That's all you need. That's it. That's how you do it. Will money possess any value in the kingdom? Nothing but truth. And that's how the enemy has played on our minds because we are weaklings. We are weak people. You can try to excuse yourself from that descriptive superlative, but that's us. You can make it appear as though that you have a greater strength and the magnitude of a greater knowledge than others, but that's not the truth. That's why he gives us leaders meant to direct and show us. Not to abuse, but not to allow you to abuse either. I want to read from the Katve. As I do a little prep, two things. And then on next Shabbat, I will get into the depths of this message. What we must know. And I do not want to approach it today because there are things that I want to set in order among Yisra'ya. There's people here, those that are scattered abroad because they really, they don't care for each other. I don't care how much you say that, it still does not register in the conscience of the people. You don't even give a damn about the ones you think you do. Because does Yah love his people? He loves us. Did he give everything? Does he straighten us? He correct us? When you love someone, you correct them. You don't give a damn. Mothers say they love their daughters and they don't give a damn. I say to all of you daughters here that even to help those that are out, even to help this daughter, there are things that you could do. You haven't given a damn. You say you do, but you don't give a fat nickels worth of rat's ass. And I don't give a damn what you say. But you love, though. You love to act silly and to act like clowns, what we as a people love to do. You get quiet. As though saying the truth hurts, doesn't it? I care for you, daughter. And I will say, if you want melons or anything here, you take it. It's all right, all right. Hallelujah. Can I go around? Get your damn stupid little smirky look off your face, all right? All of you. You're silly, that's why you can do that. You have no shame. That's a sad shame. That's pitiful. That is downright pitiful. That's pitiful. I said that to show us our ills. We are sick, dirty people. We have fed ourselves with such folly and things that we're not healthy. I want to be healthy. The condition, the state of Yisra'ya, it is the result of one thing. There's only one result. 
That's why when we hear things, we tend. You know, you can talk to children and then they will they respond in such a way that is so right. I say something to this young lad. He will say, oh, papi. Uh, just because of his attitude makes me change the direction. That's how he responds. If he responds any other way, then, boy, I will thump your heads. That's, we got to learn. And we respond that way because we don't have the courage and the audacity and the forthrightness about ourselves to deal with that damn thing that is deluded in us. So we play it off like sport. I'm not here for no damn sport. That's not my agenda. You want some sports, you go out there and play around. You want to grab ass, I'm not here to grab ass. I don't say nothing that's funny. The results, why we're in the condition we're in, the reason we're in our state of mind, I will read from this book. Don't worry about where it's at. You're not going to go revisit it. You're not going to look at it. And we're full of our own lies that we say we are. It's not even a part of your agenda. It's the truth. That's why we respond. You know it's the truth. You're not going to do it. And just be honest. You have the ruach of Yad, you will know whether I'm speaking from the book. All right? Just here today. As the Nobi of Yah begins to exert himself in the dimension and the power that Yah had to fashion his mind for. Why is he fashioning our minds? Do you understand that? You understand? Do you know, man? You understand why he's fashioning our minds to be like the mind of Yahshua? You understand that? Why? Can I tell you? Will you believe me? The same reason he fashioned his son's mind, that he can talk to him and conversate with him. That's why he says, let the mind of Yeshua. Did he talk with him? Did he talk with him? Did he talk with him? In the midst of all his great battles, did Yeshua talk to him? Not my will be done, your will. He is trying to assign, fashion our minds. What father? He talks to this boy, and yet the boy cannot respond but with his giggles and his laughter. But he talks to him. Your talks to us, and we can't talk to him, but we should respond with our rejoicing and our ecstaticness that we're ecstatic about what Yah speaks unto us. That's why he fashioned our minds that he can talk to us. That he can fellowship with us. He can sit down and dine with us. Who wants to sit at one's table? And then they're going to vilify you and you eat their food. I'm not going to sit there. Even I had a wicked brother that uh, I began to denounce his Allah. I said, damn your Allah. He's a damn dog, man. I said, damn your Allah. Damn your God. He looks at me, emphatically, poignant, strong in his verbiage. He said, I will not even eat with you, man. I said, I don't give a damn. I said it for you not to eat with me. And we departed. Oh, we departed more ambiguously than those that would agree to disagree. No, I disagree with you. Totally, I disagree with our approach to Yah. It's wrong. It's not the right. We're sitting at the tables where it's full of vomit and putrefied stench. We're eating puke, the puke of our flesh. 
And so he raised up this novi to fashion the mind of Yisra'ya, but it's a difficult thing to do. That's why Yahshua came to make known, to expose the mystery of the hidden works of, of darkness. He came uh, to do that. You know those wicked ones there in Corinthia, uh, Corinna, that when the boy had his mama's, his daddy's wife, that if it had not been for someone telling Shaul that, at least someone had the courage to say that. And had the righteousness to let him know. He said, when I come, I'm going to set the damn mess in order. He said, I'm coming. When we want to hide things because we're trying to hide our own damn wickedness and our sin. When you find people that wants to hide. And they say things because they're immature. There are people that say things because they're immature. They don't know. They don't know anybody because they're immature. There's nothing more vile than an immature woman. Men are just stupid when they're immature. But there's nothing more putrefying to me than an immature woman. Nothing. There's nothing more immature to me, more, more vile to me than an immature woman. I'd rather a woman just be quiet. That she will not show the insanity of her ignorance. You understand? A man, I will bruise his head, but there's nothing more vile to me than that. I hate, I hate that above all things. I don't even want to get close to that. Don't even... Because the daughter was not made to be silly. She was made to be a helpmeet. And you love silliness more than you love truth. That's why you love to laugh and act silly. My house, because there is no time to weep in my house. It's just a time of sober and diligence. We must be vigilant and diligent about the affairs of Almighty Jah. There's a time to weep. There's a time to cry. There's a time to kill. There's a time to die. We're in a time that we must die now. We must destroy this flesh. There's no time to be silly. There's no time for laughter. No time for that, Yisra'ya. Time out for your clowningness. It hasn't produced anything at all. It's time to be sober. Daughters of Tizayon. And when they're sober, the first thing they do, examine themselves. And that's what we need to do. You haven't caused me no harm. Huh? Even the ones that have turned against me, you haven't caused me no harm. Your sins have not harmed me. I have bore the burden and the, and, the, and the tremendous agony of that. But it's not going to cause me to press, uh, to, not to press on. And you're sure Hamashiach. Hallelujah. And I do them all right by not even messing with them. Go on. You don't have to worry about me. I don't want to talk with you because your conversation is not like mine. You're not going to talk about the things I talk about. What do you think my wicked kinsmen are going to talk about? You think they're going to talk about Yah? And you rejoice in that damn folly. They're going to talk about folly because you're full of folly. No, I'm talk I am talking about the Most High. Almighty Yahweh. It says here in the book, I'm going to read, Yah shows the possession. He says, for my people, are we the people of Yah? You're not the people of Yah then. I speak to you, my friends. He says, for my people, he uses the words evel, evel. He said, they are foolish people. Do you understand the depth and the composition of that word? He says that we are an evel people. What is a people that's evel? It is a people. That above all things, they despise the wisdom of Yah. We despise what is written out of this book. Show you the components of his people, they are ever, they despise his wisdom. And what they do when something is said, you can't do the research, I've done it on the word. And I've searched it more than in one place, but in hundreds of places. It is one that when someone says something, they mock it. They think it's funny. Oh, he said that. To, oh, she said that. <laughs> um, that's the stupidity of that spirit. It's what I'm mocking. Now make me a liar. Do the research. Find the word F-L-E-V hyphen V-E-E-L. 
It is one that makes mockery, they despise wisdom. Uh, and when there is a directive that you are dealing with you, uh, then you smirk at it, you smile at it like, hmm. that's wicked. That's the way Yah's people are. That shouldn't be, Israel. It is time that we as a nation of people began to mature. And the only way we go to mature, we got to hear. You've heard your damn silly mouth talk enough. It's time for you to hear. Every daughter, you should present your way. That's why a daughter should be shamefaced. And I'd rather see you with no expression than to express when I say something. I'd rather not see that. Don't do me like that. I don't do you like that. Don't do me like that. It's a, it's, it's a blight. It's a sign of the hilt of stupidity and ignorance. That's the wickedness that lies in the depths of that one's bosom. And that's the truth. He said, my people are foolish. They're evil. They think it's funny. They like the sport. They mock when something is said that prove them to be guilty. That they are the practitioners of that. They kind of mock. They go, <laughs> smirky. He's hit me with that. You damn right I am. You damn right. You ought to be wise enough to know that even if Yah is trying to show you some love, he will take the rod of correction and correct you on your ass, okay? You can protect it all you want to. I don't give a damn whether it's husband or wife. You can protect your husband, you can protect your wife. I don't give a damn. I'm not going to let her cause some disorder here. To corrupt this place, she will go to hell. You can. Isn't that amazing? I rebuke you before all. And you tell me that you're the only daughter that's guilty of even your accusers. They accuse your sure. Or they come time, to, uh, just like the woman is caught in the midst of adultery, they all accuse her. A dirty whore. And she began to weep. And when your sure wrote in the ground, he began to speak. He looked around and they all just tiptoed out. And then he says, where are your accusers? He says, and I accuse you, not myself. That's the way we are. We take the Torah as a little old book of, you know, playing. and We can kind of make it work for me, but no. It works for Yah's purpose. So his people are Evel. When you understand the depth of that word Evel, it will cause you to change many things about you. When Yah speaks to you, you are to appreciate that. To the pure, all things are pure. To those that are defiling and unbelieving, they don't believe a damn thing. Yah speaks to you, you just receive it, you rejoice. In all things, the Zokin, uh, Mahale Yah taught the teachers, uh, you rejoice in all things, uh, you give Toda. Yada, it is a form of, of praise that was thanksgiving unto Yah. Yeah. This damn generation, uh, kill it all, Yah. Dig it up and kill us all. Yeah. Yeah. Kill us all, Yah. He is going to do it. Yeah. That's why I, I'm a word man, and I've been doing research. I did some more this week on one word. Hallelujah, for what? For your edification. And we are people don't even appreciate that. For those that join us, they will not even strengthen the hand of this messenger. Hallelujah. He said, my people, his bacha, with the bacha of Yah, he chose you before you were birthed. That means something to me. That's great value to me. He said, these are my bacha, the ones I've elected. Before you were formed in your imma's womb, Yeremiah, I knew thee. And I bacha, I yada you. He's the one that shaped his mind to speak. He may have been a weeping man, but he wept for the sins of Yisrael. He knew the hand of Yah would be poured out beyond measures. 
He said, my people, they are foolish. And the reason we act, Evel, the reason we act that way is because they have not Yada, they have not known Yah. That's why we're foolish. That's why we mock things when Yah speaks to us. He says things to us uh, to reveal uh, some of the insidious workings of our hearts. Uh, that's why we mock it. That's why we laugh. That's why we, we, we show this little juvenile childish uh, pretense uh, and put on this little front. When what mocks, they say it doesn't mean a damn thing to me. Uh, it means nothing to me. Uh. Oh, I know you're saying that to me. Hell yeah, Yah saying that to you. We are hellish. I say, hell yeah. He's saying that. He's trying to correct us from our defilement. And to show us what kind of things that have caused us not to grow and mature. And why we stink to high hell the way we do. He said, they're evil. They're evil. They mock me. And the reason they mock you, Yeremiah... And the reason they smirk at you uh, is because they have not yelled at me. They have not lured me. They have not perceived me. Uh, they have not learned my ways. They have not been introduced to my ways. Uh, they have not been lomad. They have not been taught my ways. Uh, their heart has not been instructed uh, in the counsel that I mandate and command my people to walk in. Uh, and so they mock it when they hear it. Uh, that's what we mock it. Uh, we smirk it. Uh, we make these juvenile faces. Correct me, uh, Correct me, Yah! Yeah. In your judgment, so when Yah judges is correcting you, uh, yeah. and not in thy anger, at least you bring me to nothing. Uh, he judges your heart, it ought to break you down uh, and make the tears of rejoicing come. Uh, we sit like damn fools and we mock you, uh, and we laugh at him. Uh, woe to your damnation, my friend. Uh, you play with Yah. You play with me because you don't know him. Mirabi, I say, correct me, judge me, judge me, correct me. In your judgment, not in your anger. At least you bring me to naught, yeah. You bring me down to the gates of hell, to death. You bring me down to Muth, whereby from the grave you cannot hear my voice. No crying. Hallelujah. I have been a wicked man all my life, but there was one thing I've always been able to hear. Counsel whether it was wise or unwise. I have not disputed with men, tried to raise a ruckus of fight. I've always been able to hear when I was corrected, I would never stand an evangelist hostile face and respond in a way that I knew that was inappropriate. I would never do that. I would never put a messenger of y'all like that on a spot like that. I would not do that. It's the state of our stupidity. He said, they have not yada. They have no ability to discern whether it's me or not. That's what yada. When you discern it's ya, you praise him with Zazachin Yaramecha commanded us with shots of praise. It's a, and Dota, Dota is a thankfulness from a well. Even in the midst of afflictions and trials, you give Toda unto Yahweh because it signifies one thing that Yahweh is able. He's more than able. If I suffer in the name of Yahshua, O oh Yahweh. Can do, and he will do. Deliver me from all of my agony. So I yada ya, oh, I yada ya. For I know there is nothing too hard for ya. For I know that ya can do, ya will do it. For his bacha. That's why. I don't care if it offends you. You told I am. I don't care if it makes you angry. You told I am because he is able to rush or to take 
that out of your bosom because if his rest there, anger resteth in the bosom of a fool. He said his people are ever. They mock what I say. And we as a people, we constantly mock Yah. He speaks directly to us and we mock him. I remember there was one here that his name was Ronald Ham. And I said to him one day as we were engaged in a conversation, he said something that was so wise that he didn't even know what he said. That's why he's in the condition he's in today. I said, you know, my friend, they take it so personal. And he retorted in a very sharp way, precisely. He says to me, Re'ach, they better take it personally because this is a personal issue with Almighty Yah, so they better take it personally. And I looked at him and said, boy, you've got that from the teaching here. That's all right. Hallelujah. He says to me the other day when I look to and see how the people go on the YouTube to watch the preaching. Well, of course, he's bouncing all us out of the way. And so he says to me, I said, there are more people looking at that you're preaching than what? So I said, I'll put you up more. He says, then you know something is wrong. Then I said, no, I know something is right. Because I know one day that my time, if we should extend this any longer, I know that in the natural I shall become weaker. And I know that it is a time that when the messenger, he sits down and says, you go forth. I'm not stupid. Hallelujah. It is the same word. It is the truth. When a man labors, when he's open, he's willing to hear. When he's willing to understand his limitations and allow others to assist sir, and to strengthen him, he can be a mighty man. It's almost like a fool saying, I can't do that. You know you cannot do it. Oh, I know how to do it. You have that kind of pride, man. Show me how to do it, man. I'll know how to do it next time. I don't mind someone showing me how to do something. I don't mind. I have no compunction with that. Yes, says the reason they mock me when they are guilty. That is what Evel is. Anytime that someone says something to you and you want to chuckle, you want to laugh, don't do that. Just be sober and serious. Don't chuckle with that. You can be right in your assessment of the matter. They can be dead wrong, but you still don't chuckle. Why? Because to the pure, all things appear, you receive it. Although it's dead wrong, it, it governs your heart and it shows you what you lack and what you need to come up in. Let them be wrong. But that's all right. It's pure to you. You receive it because it's beneficial. It assists, it helps you. But when what is evil, you mock. When you're guilty, you will always mock. When you're wrong, you will laugh. You will mock the matter. He says unto us, they have not known me. They have not yet me. He says that they are a sakhal. I teach this all the time. He said they are saltish children. The word so sochal, sochal, it is a child or children that are always silly. Everything is silly. Laughter and silly. Sober things, they're silly. That is what sochesh is. They are so, so, S A W, sochal, sochal. They are silly people. They love to act silly. Things are silly. Mothers, you Ima, it is time that all of our energy, you, uh, you gather with the young daughters, it is to be sober. And the measure of your conversation shall be measured by one thing, the result of what you have imparted and put into that individual. That's what it should be measured on. That you see the beauty, you see the fruit of that one's life. Same thing with us men, and much more with you men than with the daughters of Tezion. Because if we are silly, hell, they're going to be silly. If I'm silly in my house, my is going to be silly. If I do juvenile things and I practice juvenile, she's going to be silly as hell. I don't practice that. You said what? I don't go that way. There's not much laughter in my house. We may embrace it, but there's no laughter there. I don't go that way, Yisraya. Never has been. 
They never sat around. First of all, she didn't watch television. And watch shows that were comical and live. She never watched television. She just has never been a television watcher. So even in, in the purity of our marriage, that never happened. We didn't sit with each other. <laughs> we never done that. I don't like that. I was in the world, I didn't like that. Never liked laughter. I was always a serious man. I was a serious boy. I was a fool, but I was serious. Because my agenda was different than others. I wanted to make money. I wanted to have money. And I wanted to use it. And I didn't have time for clowns. When the clowns would come around me, like, man, get away from me. I, I, no. Not me. You go somewhere else with that. His name was Herbert Ziegler. What a name for a man that was black as tar. He's about that tall. Zig was from Reedsville, North Carolina. In the military, when you find someone that we call homie, a homeboy, it tend to be a greater bond with those individuals. And Ziggy was from Reedsville, North Carolina. And Ziggy loved playing. I didn't play. Zig boy, I don't play because my friend, Theodis Tucker, he was about six foot eight. He was as serious as they come. And he did not, he did not play. He was a young man even then, but he was serious. He was six foot eight. <clears throat> His hand was big as those two hands of mine. Don Juan, he was kind of juvenile. He was about six. He was about Zachin Yaramaya, Yaramaya size. About that size too. He was from Miami. Theodis Tucker was his name. He was from Memphis, Arkansas. These were my compatriots. But Ziegler was one that he loved to play. Ah, baby. And I never forgot one day, you didn't play the dozens in the 70s. They do it today. The dozens was that you talk about someone's parroting. And I never forgot. I looked at him. I said, Ziggy, homeboy, look, I don't play. Here was this little fella, Ziggy. I'll tell you that. Let me finish quickly. I say, Ziggy, I don't play at all, man. I said, I want to tell you something. If you want your play tour, you write home to your mom and tell her to send you a teddy bear because I don't go that way, Ziggy. You understand? Oh, in the 70s, you played the dozen like that. You're talking about somebody's mama? Oh, Ziggy rose up, man. He like, man, I was saying, we're not going that way, Zig. Because that's not my thing. And we didn't even conversate for a long time because I wasn't about no playing. I was about, in my social circles of those, we were talking about politics, Nixon, the, the, the inhumanity of what was taking place in America, the racism, the prejudiceness. We were talking about Malcolm X, uh, weather report. That's what our conversation was about. We would sit down and we would rap for hours. We would have debates. Who was the best rapper? Who could, who, could, who could express or convey the message or the data of the facts better than others? And I dealt with young men. They all went back to college. All of them. Bro, Rice, he was a lawyer. His brother was a lawyer. He went back to law school. Bro, Will, he went back to Tuskegee Institute. He was a PE teacher the last time I talked to him. Come on. I'm a what? A nothing. And we were rap, baby. Come on. Let's talk about the political gender. And you have to keep yourself a brass. And you have to make sure that you were sharp for that day. Because we were not playing. We were not grab assing. No laugh. We were talking about the social agenda of people that were oppressed. That's the way we dealt with it. You understand? And then we'd get up out of there. We were straight to go. What are you doing, Ziggy? Well, of course, Ziggy and I, we had no communication. But Ziggy knew that I was a man with money. Everybody knew that I had money, and I kept money. You understand? Yeah, I had money. Not that I love money, but I had money. And he come to me one day, needed some money to send some help to his mother. Well, that opened the door for Zig and me. That right there alone. Zig knew that he couldn't come to me like a clown. I said, what you need, Zig? Because $100 back then was a lot of money. He said, I'll pay you back, Brett Robin. I said, man, that's straight. You're straight. You're homeboy. That's straight. Send your mama the money. That's all you need here. Send her that. We're straight. And when I did that, that hard heart, the man, that just opened everything up 
for Ziggy, man. He was straight with me. Ziggy coming around me, he knew. Bro, Rob, what's up? How you doing? Everything's straight? Yeah. He knew that I was in his corner. That one day, I used to box all the time in the military. I put on the clothes with him, especially them northern boys that thought they were tough. I would knock them out. I was a little fellow. I was about 160 pounds then. And Ziggy was about 200, two and a quarter. We call him trash can because he would hold his head like that. He would walk like that. That's how trash can was. He had a big head. He would, you know, that's the way he walked. He was, he was, he was cool as, he was cool as a cucumber. He was. He walked like that, Ziggy. That's the way it was. But Rob, that's the way, that's the way he walked. And so one day we put on the gloves. I said, come on, Ziggy, let's, let's, come on, you and me, you and, me, you and my, you and me, it's all right, but Rob, come on, I said, come on, man, let's, we just, we just going to play it out some, come on, because I, I, I always love to exercise. And of course, that left of mine, it was quicker than lightning, I could, and old Zig, old trash can, he just, you know, he just, he, he, he just, you know, and Ziggy boy, he shot that left right here. Boom. And when it hits me, I didn't feel it. It was like a delayed, like a implosion of a building. I just dropped. Knees and everything went weak. And when Ziggy did that, man, he threw up a robin. I say, Zig boy. Man, take these gloves off me. He knocked me out. But yet because of that bond, he was more concerned, you understand? And even in that environment, we had a friendship. But when we leave, we would cry. She knows that I was staying in touch with all those men. The others, Tucker, I was staying in touch with them. Because there was a bond that nothing like of. You haven't experienced that until you really develop something with an Ach of Yisra'ya. And then when you do that, you experience that. If you have a dollar, it makes no difference. You have a dollar, period. I'm going to close here a bit. I'm going to teach what my purpose was on next Shabbat. I want the world to hear this. You must hear it. But there are things we got to brush up around our own house first. He said, my people have not known me. They have not found out about me through discerning of Torah, through reading of Torah. We're not devoted unto Torah, are we? We're not. And I want to close with that, what the lachak of Yah is. He said, they are sottish, they are sakal, they are silly, foolish children. He said, they have no being, they have no understanding. They are not diligent, they show no discernment, they show no wise attributes in their actions and their activity. He said they have no being. They don't show themselves to be attentive unto the instructions of Yah. We are not a people that are attentive unto Yah's instructions. You will know you are attentive unto the instructions of Yah when you shema, when you guard them, you preserve them in your bosom and you keep them from allowing the wicked one to come in and to run it out of your bosom. We we'll allow our own wickedness to rob us. We we'll allow our own disobedience unto Yah, our defilement, our silliness uh, to destroy the things that are told that He sow in our bosom. That's what we allow. When one has the being of Yah, they have the attentive to, to discern, to know what is of Yah. They are given over unto that we have no understanding. We consider what he says. Why? Because uh, we are about the diligent efforts of Yah. We are diligent about the affairs of Yah. We are diligent about correcting ourselves uh, and setting our minds straight according uh, to the life source of life, uh, the Torah of Yah. Yeah. Instead of acting silly as hell. Does that make sense, my young Ach Toda? We're not people that are attentive. To do evil, we know how to do it. But to do tough, we know not. We don't have, know how to be kind unto Yisrael. I was thinking this morning is that we said 
Oh, if I was a wayfarer, man, I could just fly away. I said I would be a recluse, but I will not want to live that way. And take my ish off, she will go with me and find me a secluded place and live simple. I mean, beyond simplicity. Your has invested something in me. I can't go that way. This is a horrible generation. We don't correct ourselves. We don't love you, those that speak, that speak the word of Yah because we don't want Yah correcting us. We will defend children. We'll defend wives and husbands. And we will not defend his truth. We'll set for a defense of Imah, his truth. I'm not going to defend her ways when they're wrong. And she knows that better than you all. Why? Because I love my body. I love my body. I love my body. When a man leaves his father, his avat, his inner house, he takes unto him a wife. He cleaves to a wife. They're no more twain, but they're ikha. So I love my flesh. I love me a whole lot. A bunch of lot. I love me. Hallelujah. So if I speak with such ferocity, to me, sometimes you ask me, what are you saying? Well, I'm talking to me. I said, I'm just talking to me. You jackass of a man, you're ignorant, you're filthy. You're not even worth anything. We don't see our ways like that. And she knows that when she steps out of line that I am honest and faithful and truthful. She may weep. You all haven't seen a woman weep until you see her weep. I've seen her weep for days. That's right. You damn hypocrites, because I'm not going to allow my issue to get out of line and to affect the works of Yah to offend it. You may, I'm not, because I'm not going to do it. And her tears are beautiful. I like that. Here they are. Hallelujah. You can protect wickedness, I will not. The children with no understanding, they have no discernment. He says they are hacham, they are wise, they are skillful. We are practitioners, we are skillful, we are wise, we are prudent. They are wise to do evil. We are cunning, we are wily, we do with such subtleties, subtleties. We are wise to do evil. We know how to do evil well. We do it cunningly, stealthily, and wickedly. We will cut each other's throat. That's the way Yisra'ya are. That's why they can't dwell with each other. But they love the wicked because they can hide themselves in the midst of the jungle. Uh, in this camouflage world, they fit right in. That's why they fit right in. We can go to these damn gatherings of your wicked can folks. You go right there, you get to laugh and have it for. Hey, girl, I know, but I'm just glad to see boy where you been, man, my boy. I feel dirty. I don't want to be a part of it. I won't do it. As Granny would say, they're cackling and grinning and laughing and funny now. I'm not going to be a part of it. I will not reside. You're sure to that kind of torment, to that kind of ridicule, to that kind of mocking. For greater is he that is in me uh, than he that is in the world. I will not allow that to touch the jewels of the gems of Yah in me. I won't. You can. I will not. And I will not apologize either. They're wise to do evil, but to do right, to do yattab, yattab, to do tav, to do excellent Yisraya, to be pleasing, to do well, to be affectionate, to do yattab. 
And you do with, with the essence of one, one thing. You do it with joy. You do it with joy. You may have joy doing something for her, but what about doing it for her with great joy even before you do it for her? You understand? But why not do it for her? Yatta. Yatta. We don't know how to do right. They have no yada. They have none. He said, they have no knowledge at all. We have no dehum, no da'at at all. We're deceivers. We think we know, and yet, we do not know. Why is it that we don't know? Why is it that we cannot hear ya? When you mock ya, you will never hear. When you act silly, you act foolish, daughters. That's the sign of an unbalanced growth in you. A wise daughter to Zion, she will just hear. Okay, let me hear beyond the words. What is he saying? What is she saying? But that's the way I'm perceiving it. But that's not what she said. Let me hear the words. Let me hear the spirit of what he or she is saying. And the reason why we don't know, he says, and they have no knowledge. We have no dehum, no joy in doing what you command, no power to discern, no da'at. We have no experience with the knowledge of the wisdom of your speech. We have, he said, they have no knowledge. This is your speaking. You want to bring an accusation against one, accuse him. It's not me. And he calls to know me to rise up again and to speak why they have no da'at, why we, are, why we have no wisdom of Yah. He says, and why? Because we must develop our ears to hear, our ozin, that our ayin, our ayin, our spiritual and mental ability is open to grasp the depths of Almighty Yah. That we can look at the flowers and understand the beauty of Yah. That we can breathe the breath of air and understand uh, the strength and the life of Yah. So our eye here consists of our mental and our spiritual ability to detect and to discern, uh, to understand the matter of any nature by the construct of Almighty Yahweh. And a child is developed by learning ABC, DFG, whatever, that they develop a consciousness of expression that they can express things, of matters they see, and even when they don't understand. It's the truth, son. I'm not lying to you. I'm faithful to you. You're faithful to me, I'm faithful to you. Listen. Yah says this. He said, here now, Shemach, obey what, what you say. You that were raised in the 50s and 60s and 40s, our parents will often say, you hear me now? Hear me now, boy. Would they not, they not say that to us? Hear me now. They would always say that. They knew the value of hearing. Say, hear me now, boy. Hear me. Girl, you hear me? Hear me now. Well, mom, I thought that's what you said. No, no, hear me now, girl. They would always say that. They would always tell us that. They would always speak that with a warning. Correct? They would always tell us that. They would always tell us that. Hear me now. You better hear me. They would always tell us that. I don't care whether you bought it or not. They would always tell us that. Because there was something that was intuitive in them, ingrained in them, that this is what Yah says. He says, hear now, hear now, Shemach, do. When you hear the voice of Yah, you do not harden your heart, as in the days of provocation when they provoked Yah in the wilderness. And they began to build them gods and began to reject the mitzvah, the commands of Almighty Yah. He says, hear me now. And he calls us again this sakal, oh foolish, oh satish 
people. He says we are people without an understanding love. We do not have the bina, we don't have the wisdom of Yah, the discerning, the power to understand what is of Yah and what is not of Yah. He said, without a, an understanding love, he said, which have us, and you have ears, you have eyes, you have ears. He says, and yet you discern not, you don't even see. He said, but you have ears, but you do not hear. Who has caused that Yah? Why has that come upon us? Because we are sakal, we are foolish. We mock Yah when he speaks to us. He ain't talking to me. <laughs> he, I, he, I don't care if he's directing. That, we've done that. I've watched that over the many years here. I've watched the juvenile's stupidity and the simplicity. Look, look at this little house here. A few, a handful of people here. That's all it is, you all that are listening. It's a handful of people here. There are more of you out there listening to me than it is in this house. Oxymion, what do we have all, online with us? Give, give me the numbers. Show me with your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We all we have double online than what's in this house. And some of those houses have two, three, four, five, ten people. I've watched it. And you would think that the people would learn. You would think the men would learn. You would think the daughters would learn. That we will not go in the same way. And we have not learned a damn thing. He said we are ignorant. We have no knowledge of him. We have no knowledge of Almighty Yah at all. And because we have no knowledge of Him, we are destroyed. We are destroyed. We are brought down to the sides of hell, to the gates of hell. That's why our minds are hellish. That's why Yisrael love hellish things. The things that are true, they don't want to do that. But that which is wicked and vile, we love doing that. He calls one by the name of Hoshia to marry a harlot. His house represented the very vile nature of Yisra'ya. That's, I got a message right now to teach on that. But we are not ready for it. And that's the truth. I have studied for, I have a message right now that week before last. I haven't even been able to teach on the prophets to know me, have I? I don't know if I ever preach it. It's It's sad. It's almost like football season started. They just prepare for football season the day it starts, don't they? All year long there. They're shaping their bodies. They're getting their bodies stronger. They're lifting weights. They're running. They're watching their diet. So when they come into training camp, they're ready. Basketball season's for some teams stop ended in the NBA in April. And yet from that day, those men may take a week off or a couple of weeks to build their bodies. And that's all they're talking about now, playing some basketball. And then immediately they're in the gym, they're lifting weights. They're building their cardiovascular, their diets, they have chefs, they have dietitians that tell them what to eat, what not to eat. We've been eating every kind of vile, damn wicked thing there is. We don't want to eat what the messenger of Yah says eat. They're pruning, they're pruning, cutting off, shaping their bodies what to reduce every kind of body fat. They want to be able to glide and to run and to move. They want to move like a stout, like a deer. And they know what it's going to take. It's going to take tenacity and perseverance, hard work. It's going to take a labor. It's going to take shaping their mind to endure more than what they think they can do and go beyond the point of the old limitation of their mind to take them into an arena, a stratosphere that they didn't even know that they possessed that ability to go beyond. Yeah. And that shows the tenacity and the tenaciousness of that individual. They have the power to win. They have the will to win. Yeah. They win or not. We don't have that. We don't want to fight the battle of Yah. We don't want to fight in his army. Hell, there are no soldiers at all. And warriors don't even mention that. Just like Uriah, he was a warrior, wasn't he? He had a cause greater than Bathsheba. A beautiful thing that would be, she, she would have been uh, refreshing herself in the, uh, the, in the beautiful perfumes. Uh, not this cheap messy we buy today, but the pure oils. Uh, her body would have been so smooth and so beautiful that this man would have cut a monkey flip if he had gone in there. 
He said, I can't attach myself to that because I got a cause. It is the cause of the king. And it's greater than me. It is the kingdom of God. It's greater than me. And if I go home and see that beautiful woman, and if I smell the fragrance of her breast, if I lay in her breast, I will not want to leave. I will abandon the house of Yisrael. I will leave my brothers to die out in the battle of the opposition. I shall not. I will sleep at the door of the king. I don't care if I'm drunk, my mind is not persuaded to go that way. I don't care how the world tries to intoxicate us and to make us drunk with the cares of this world. We don't go that way. I don't care what mama says. I don't care how she says she loves you. She don't give a damn. She doesn't. She doesn't love you. He said, I won't go that way. Because a warrior, he fights for a cause that's greater than him. And the cause of Yahshua is greater than me. My people will destroy because we lack. You see, my people are destroyed because we lack. We are dama. We are annihilated. We are eviscerated. We are brought down to hell. We are destroyed. We are perishing. We are cut off from truth. We are dama. We are destroyed. Why, yeah? Because we believe, we lack, we lack the knowledge of Almighty Yah. We are corrupt. Beli is said we are corrupt, just like Beli, we're corrupt, we're ignorant, we're stupid. My people, they are destroyed because they lack the, uh, we lack the ability to perceive what is of Yah, my son. We have no power. Uh, to discern. We're not skillful in the Torah because we don't. Lahak. We have no devotion to studying the Torah. We have no devotion. That's why I have not allowed. Listen, you can leave me do anything you want to. The internet thing. I don't want that whereby we spend so much time on that and no time at Torah. Something is sick in your damn mind. Something is twisted in your damn mind. We must come out of the mindset of the world. We don't always be drunken by the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches as this old man, Zachary Mahalia, always, if he knows nothing else, he knows that. That chokes out the riches of the Torah of your and our minds are constantly on the things of the world and caring for that. We become drunk. So it takes our time. Well, I got study tonight. You didn't do it last night. Or the week before that, or two weeks before that. You don't know the last time you picked it up. I'm a warrior, I must keep my hair, my swords wet, bathed, and ready for the battle. So I must keep my, as you would say, sword, my sword sharpened. I must keep it that way. I'm ready. What? For the Torah of Yah is the sword of the, uh, the word, the Daba, the Imra. That's the, that's the weapon of our battle, isn't it? I don't care how much breastplate you got on. I don't care what kind of helmet you got on. I don't care how your feet are shot. I don't care how your lungs are gutted about. Unless you got... Woo! There it is. Unless you have that. The sword of Yah, which is the Torah of Yah. You're going to get trumped on. You're going to die and they're going to kill you. That's why the enemy keeps us from devotion to the Torah. That's why we're not devoted. That's why there's no, there's no ingrained obsession with Torah. We're obsessed with everything but Torah of Yah, Yisrael, and that is the truth. Give me a moment, I'm going to close. Yah barak you all, may he strengthen you all, our precious, Ahot Mikaya, we're going to pray for you. Let us stand to our feet, and if we turn towards Yerushalayim, the city of Yah, as we bow in your presence, our Abba, your sure smart name, we petition you for our Ahot her body, the ailment that she's wrestling with now, that you touch her mightily and heal her as we gather as she and Mikhaya, her ish pray, and their son, Tisefaniya, we ask you to touch and strengthen, heal her body, heal all Yisraya, Yerafa, 
rest upon us all of your shoes and give us guidance and strength in this hour that we are in. Teach us and show us your Torah. Cleanse us, wash us, purge us in the dam of your shoe that we may be made one ichad in your shoe, Hamashir. Our sins are cleansed. We're free to serve you, Yah. We told you for this Shabbat, bless us all those that have joined us for the live broadcast, strengthen their homes, and touch them all, we ask. And the blessed assurance of the only name given unto man, whereby we must be Yahshach, in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we barak you for all things. With our voice we cry, Hallelujah, 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 Yabrak.